Cowboys and Aliens movie review. Daniel Craig wakes up in the middle of nowhere in the desert. He's forgotten everything except how to be a badass. In this part western movie, he is the mystical man with no past who you don't know what he's, you know, what his motivations are. He's got a bit of a nemesis, I guess you could say, in Harrison Ford, a former officer who has some reasons to hate him. However, the two have to team up when the other half of this odd mix of genres, the alien invasion flick, enters in and multiple characters with, you know, convenient, conveniently chosen for prime emotional impact, or at least that is the intent, are abducted by the aliens and various different groups have to work together to try to, and individuals, to, you know, get these people back. We even have a Sean Penn moment with, you know, is that my wife in there? I suppose a good place to start is the cast, because the casting is really, really spot on. I didn't know Daniel Craig could be such a badass, but he can. I knew that Harrison Ford could, and, you know, it's a lot like with Tommy Lee Jones in the recent Captain America movie. Yeah, they might, you know, be graying, they might look really old, but they can still really pull it off, although Tommy does a better job than Harrison. Clancy Brown. It's just, his role fits him like a glove. He is a small-town priest who, you know, has some wisdom and isn't too obnoxious about the whole, you know, Christianity thing. Sam Rockwell is great as this bartender who gets no respect. Yeah, no Rodney Dangerfield joke, sorry. In general, it's just the cast is really good. The Western aspect of this movie does work pretty well. It, for a long time, the movie really only does feel like a Western. The marriage between the two genres is surprisingly successful, actually, and it manages to fit in a lot of cliches from both genres pretty seamlessly, you know, blending them. The aliens themselves are pretty coolly designed, although not that distinct in appearance and especially not behavior. They also employ some rather low-tech tools considering that you know they've mastered interstellar travel. The abductions happen by grappling hook. I, I don't know what's up with that. Maybe they ran out of money or something. Yeah. And they don't, they, they don't take cattle, they just blow it up. I think they misread the manual or something. The action in the movie is pretty good, and it builds nicely. We have a pretty cool climax, especially. And a very Western-style climax. The effects are pretty nicely done. 
some of the action is quite chaotic and disorienting, it does tend to be quite effective regardless of if it's, you know, supposed to be fun and have us, you know, cheering for someone in the scene. Again, Craig is just, you know, awesome. And the, the he can really take people down in this movie. You know, whether it's that or whether we're just supposed to be confused about what's going on, it really works. You know, it you can part of the way tell that it is John Farrow who directed this. You know, it has that kind of it doesn't quite have the pace and energy of Iron Man, although it somewhat tries for it part of the way. But again, you know, Western, very straight Western a lot of the way, and Westerns are not really meant to be intense, not the, you know, original, real kind of Western. It takes its time. It builds atmosphere. This movie very much builds atmosphere. And the dialogue is really great, although at times it tries a bit too hard in this one. Some... They try the whole speaking like in the Old West a bit too much. It, it gets a little you know, I don't know, honor student, kinda. It just, see, we studied, it's, this is how people were supposed to talk back then. It's, it's a little too much. One thing that's kind of ironic, there is some flying in this, and it's nowhere near as exciting as an Iron Man. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, you know, you really feel the impact of blows. A pretty good part of the way. There are a number of subplots, not too many, and little, you know, character motivations and character relationships. It's a lot about the characters, really. And these tend to be resolved and pretty well. None of it is too after school special. All in all, it's a fun film, but it also really doesn't quite live up to its potential. It feels like it should be more fun, and I do have this annoying feeling that I'm not going to care that much about this movie like a week from now. And I suppose you could also maybe say that it plays it a bit too straight. The, the very concept, the very title of this, you have to have some fun with it. It's too dumb. It's too mindless to not just go wild. And some of the movie does go wild, but it also does try too much to be taken seriously as a Western and an alien invasion movie. You know, both of those can be quite serious at times. You know, it tries that too much to also have fun with it. It doesn't quite get the... You know, Scream is a movie that, and its sequels to a reasonable extent, balances very well the homage kind of thing and, you know, also being a good entry into it. And this tries more to be an entry into, you know, both genres and it just ends up not being quite as much fun. And I think that's also at least part of, I'm not going to say all of, but part of the negative response this movie has gotten is because people just expected it to be a bit more wild, and it really should have been. But with that said, it also just isn't as good of a movie as it could have been. Just in general. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.